Hello and welcome to the Panasonic booth at ISC 2020. We, uh, we show a lot of range of our products here. We've got our new projectors here, the RQ50. This and is 50,000 lumen. This is 50,000 lumen, yes. So uh, we have that projecting onto all the different walls here. So we've got three here blending, and then the center one showing. And it looks like something like this. This is the. Sorry. This is the 30,000 lumen. This is the RQ. Uh, yeah, this is the RQ 35. Uh, so this is 30,000 lumens uh, projector. Why is it so big? What's special about it? This is like for museums and stuff so like so, that, right? Yeah, basically, it's so perfect for auditoriums. So you've got the 4K, uh, it's 4K, 4K digital link as well. Uh, you've got the 3D professional in there as well. Is so, it I mean, for cinema massive, and stuff like that? Uh, no, not for cinema. It's for live events, uh, museums, all those different things where you can have it uh, projecting anywhere you I really want. I was at want. the Doha Museum, uh, National Museum of uh, Qatar. They, I think they had like, it looked like they had a thousand of those. Yeah, they've they got. They had. They had. A, they had a bunch of them put in uh, to the yeah. Do, uh, Doha Museum as well. Um, and so you're launching the fifty thousand lumen. Uh, fifty thousand is brighter. Uh, there's demand for that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially in the sort of live events area where there's huge events uh, being put on all the world. So at the moment we're showing our. Uh, Esports uh, event uh, where well, we've got four gamers. Let's go over there. And then, yeah, I'll take you to the middle. So we've got four gamers, we've got the 50,000 lumen projecting one of the main screens where the gaming on it. And you can see this the whole sort of Panasonic solution in a way with cameras and projectors and screens. Uh, <laughs> displaying it perfectly. So it's projecting uh, some interactive stuff there. What's yep. happening here with this multi? So we've mapped it to the, to the trophy over there. So this is the next generation ITIP platform. Um, so what you can actually do is control and switch between cameras uh, just completely over IP uh, with a touch screen panel. And there's like a screen here, the whole system big display yes, and uh, each source can be a 4K uh, it can be it can be 4K HD any sort of uh, solution you want uh, we can put it up onto the uh, IT IP platform what do you need customers for something like that everybody uh, doing big shows live shows yes the rental companies um, then you got the live events companies anyone that would be using any sort of switcher at the moment or sort of controller they'll be able to use in any live event now, so they'll be able to convert over to e uh, the IP platform. Nice. Can we walk over there on the other side? Yeah, absolutely. I'll so take you over here. a big booth you have. Just gotta try to get the ball in the net. Also, we'll very, get behind him. Oh yeah. Pop on this one. So there we go. Look at that. He's already in front. So. What is this he's using? This is the UC4000, so this is our 4K studio camera. So this would be perfect for the live events as well. So, uh, so moment, what's film. special about this camera? Uh, so you've got a uh, 4K, 4.4K sensor, so it's basically made for sports. Um, so it's got such a high frame rate. Um, and then uh, uh, it's typically to take 12G out the back as well. So you've got a, you've got a 12G at SDI that you can take out. Um, and then transmit from there. What do you do with all this 12G SDI? Sorry? This is to get the 4K signal out? Yeah, essentially. You see, so the 12G is uh, 4 3G SDIs put, put into one. Why is this set up here saying 8K HDR, 8K ARI? So that's our uh, 8K ROI camera. So the ROI stands for regionally of interest. Uh, so we've got an 8K sensor, and then you can have uh, an actual crop into that sensor. <laughs> okay. So you can see the different uh, crops within that. Nice. So you, and you can move it with this, with this joystick. So you can move it around. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and this is a part of your. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, color control system. So you got the HRP 1000s, three of them. One of them is made for the AK ROI. Then we have um, our, our Technopoint Dolly system. What's this? So this is our sort of dolly system where we can have a camera on top and then we can uh, have a rail system. You can have that on the floor or on the ceiling on the truss. On the ceiling too. Yeah. Um, Let's walk around there. Let's walk around your booth. If you go here. This is our new uh, 4K switcher. 
yeah. so you can see on there. So it's, a, it's an upgrade of the HS410 to the UHS500 um, and it basically allows you to have the 12G uh, option on there. It looks really cool. Uh, and you have a t yeah, so this is all, you've got a big screen on there as well. Um, and then this is our RP150, which is our controller. What's the price on these kinds of things? Can you talk um, about price or not really? Uh, I can't be. I can't confirm that price right just yet. Uh, the price of the controller is about, uh, I think, about four to five grand. I think. Okay. So that's. that's is it like TV channels using this, or not for TV? Uh, yeah. So we in the UK we have lots of uh, TV channels like reality TV, such as Love Island or Twenty Four Hours in A and E. Nice. All of these use sort of Panasonic controllers and also. Nice. Um, Are you a world leader in this market? Uh, we have most of the market share for the Panasonic PTZs, yes. Um, and we now released the UE150, which is one of our best. Which one? So this is the this is the UE150, the AWU150, and we have out the back we can take fiber, we can take 12G, 3G, HDMI, Genlock, and you can control it over IP, and you have the option for a 12 uh, volt power supply. You can also power it via PoE plus plus injector if you would like, um, and it's on our Panapod system. So this is a flyaway kit where you can pack it into one flight case and. It will just it allows you to take it up to I think it's about six meters or probably less um, or up to, up to three meters um, and it just allows that sort of studio slash uh, studio up and down motion of the camera. Is it like a one inch sensor or what kind of sensors do you use? Yes yeah, so the camera is a one inch, one inch sensor. And then 4k very high uh, HDR support and HDR, and everything. Uh, UHD as well. And what kind of price on this? Price is about, you're looking about £10,000, so that's British pounds. Um, so then uh, you can put a bunch of them around, there's one here, yeah. there's one there. So we've got one on, the, one on the dolly there, we've got one on the totem over there, and we've got one on the panopod here. So you can have your own little setup here. And then with the RP150 controller that we looked at earlier, you can actually crop into the 4K sensor with that. Nice, and uh, so this is a huge booth, right? What is it, Panasonic yeah. Business? So uh, area here. Entertainment um, what's happening in there? Let's so, go. It's more about projectors. So here they're we're all showing. Are, they're all DLP projectors, right? Sorry? It's using DLP technology, right? Yeah, so we've got our DLP projectors um, and the also LCD range as well. But these are set up like a short throw. Yes, yeah, so this is the short throw lens, so you can get it as close to the wall as you want and it'll just project down or up depending on where you want your projector. This is 4K short throw? Yeah. Very bright. Perfect for the situation where you've got a small stage and you just want the uh, projector close to the stage. Nice. This one also? So this is our el elbow lens. Does what? This elbow? is our elbow lens. Oh. All right. So, uh, it's not, it's not possible to get better projectors than these DLP, 4K. Where's the 8K projector? Uh, not yet. Uh, we don't have a 8K projector. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, it could be arriving any moment. No, it's the potentially. Hopefully, it'll be before. I, I haven't been told anything on that. Tokyo so. 2020. You have no. to try. It. Okay. So what's on this side, or where, where do we go from now? Uh, is this showing the module? This is for our service area. This is the projector this module. This is the service area. So with Panasonic Business, you have. Yeah. Um, Whenever you buy a camera or a projector or a screen, uh, you're able to have a three-year warranty on generally a lot of our, um, not all of them, but a lot of our. Um, what are these parts? So what these are these, parts, for example? These are parts within the projector um, and heating, cooling systems. And there. Um, and here we have the DLP chips. So it's 4K. Uh, this is the new, maybe the small 4K with a with a os oscillating. Yeah. Potentially, and this is the the full frame, the full 4K. Potentially. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what fits inside. All right. Uh, does it mean the service for free? Uh, no, you get the warranty on top of that. So you add warranty, but then we can arrange 
a five day turnaround on a lot of our equipment, uh, depending on how damaged it is. Um, but we can pick it up for you, fix it, drop it back to you. How do a uh, museum, let's say, they buy 100 of these, yep. put it all over the museum, and they need to change something every like three or four years in there? The LED burns out, this, or there's a lamp. There's it. a lamp. Uh, so that would be that would come down if it's out of warranty that would come down to um, buying new kit in um, buying new swapping in. something right uh, well you, if you would like after four years maybe there's a whole new range of projectors out there that you might want um, nice. what is that part what's that in so the, the yellow phosphor makes it yellow, the, it gives out yellow light, but when you put a magenta color wheel in front of it, it makes the light go red. Because the light, the light from the camera is making it really dim, but the magenta color wheel in front of the yellow light makes it go red. It's a color wheel? It's just a color wheel. Color wheel? Yeah, that's the yellow light coming out of the light that's shining from the lamp. And it's hitting the phosphor wheel and making it go yellow. But um, to make red light, basically the magenta blocks out the green in it that makes the light go red if you see it. It's, qu it's quite dim, but if you see it, that's, that's red light shining out of that paper. Do you see the color change? Cool. Okay. Uh, let's walk around a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I'll take you through here. So through here we've got our collaboration area. And uh, we've got one of our UE, UE, uh, UE70s over there, our PTZ cameras. Up there? Up there. So, so this is one of our little dome cameras, so it's a perfect sort of position uh, for lectures and uh, lecture capture. So they don't know they're necessarily being filmed or anything like that, but it's for the students, so you'll be able to capture the lecture. Does it have all the optical zoom? Yep. So you, on certain cameras, it can go from 20 times to 30 times optical zoom, um, and then you have 10 times digital zoom on top of that, generally. Is it uh, possible to automatically crop into the speaker, go back to the presentation, stuff like that? Is there uh, like AI going on for this kind of stuff? or? No, I'm not sure about that. Um, no. No. But, What's um, over here? So here we have uh, one of our projectors. I think this is the, uh, the MZ-16. And um, up here, and we've got two elbow lenses projecting onto this wall as well. So, um, here we have um, our AWUE4, which is a static PTZ, so it's perfect for any environment that needs a 4K camera and then you just want to leave it there and control it over IP. You can take the HDMI out, so that's how you can get the 4K out. But if you just want eight, eight, uh, HD and a static PTZ, um, and that's all for the around about the five, uh, the one thousand pound mark. So probably just, just less than one thousand pounds. Less than one thousand. And that, and, and you can crop into the sensor. So I'll move this a little bit. You can crop in. So to on the sensor, you can actually what? zoom into it. Yeah. So um, if, you, if you're displaying a wide angle um, uh, image, then you can actually crop in and uh, get the HD image out. Of, out can of you? Demonstrate some of that, or is it connected now? Uh, I don't know how, to be, how we can get it up. Okay, maybe it's not set up. We can That's come okay. back. We can yeah, come back no here problem. in a bit. Uh, what are all these setups here? So we'll take you over here. So this is the PTZ control center. Uh, this is all free software that Panasonic provide for the PTZ cameras. So open here, source. Sorry. Is it open source now? Yeah, you can get it from uh, okay. uh, online whenever you need. Um, but here we can just easily add a camera. So essentially it's just a free control software that you can get. You can just go into here, add a camera. You can see all your IPs of the cameras on there. You can go out of here. And you go back to the main. Select which camera you want to use. And then here you can control it. You can speed up how fast it would rotate and zoom. Uh, you can add your presets in here and then you have your image adjustments like iris gain and white balance. Is there any kind of lag or something? I mean, uh, is the preview feed is coming over here? Yeah, this the is setup, the preview feed. But, but then uh, when you select you the stuff, it's the full feed? Yeah, so if you were recording right now, it would look like the normal feed that you get out through uh, over IP. And what kind of bit rates? Do you compress a lot to do a low bit rate? Uh, not through something like hundreds HDMI. Hundreds of megabits but, or something? Um, I'm, I've got to come back to you on that. I'm okay, not sure. No I don't want to give you an answer. I don't know. Um, Thank you.
So I'm yeah. currently, one of my colleagues is being filmed as well. Okay, let's talk but, about um, what's happening. In the middle screen over there. Yeah. On this middle, middle screen behind me, you have the auto tracking system. So we've got a UE70 up there, if you want to show that off yeah. up there. Uh, it's the top camera. Top we also have a UE150 below that, which we talked about earlier. But the, the top camera uh, is then capturing uh, the people behind me yeah. on the on the machine. So we've got one person moving and then one person stationary. And what we've actually got is the auto tracking software downloaded onto this PC behind us. So we've connected the PC and the camera into the same TP link. And then we've taken the image of the person's face, of the man's face on there, and then it's tracking that man's face. Nice. So it's actually moving physically the motors yeah. and moving the camera around to yeah. follow the person and the zoom. Yeah. So it's zoomed right into that person's face. You could, if you were here, you'd be able to definitely see it's quite a tiny face for the camera to see. But yeah. we've zoomed in uh, and then we've just managed to capture an image of that person's face. Um, on the software, it's very much like the control so software we saw earlier. So the only difference is the auto tracking bit below it. Which is part of the software. Um, there you can upload faces from a database you already have, or you can capture an image from the camera uh, that's already set up. Uh, you can add limitations to it, and then you can also uh, choose which angle you want, whether you want the full body, just the chest and the head, or just the head. Uh, so how much is one of these? Uh... The UE70, so you, with the UE70 you have a 4K 3G SDI out and HDMI out back. It's also NDI compatible. Um, and that goes for about three to four thousand pounds. All right, and the bigger one there? And then this is it's the one new, we saw earlier, which new is one. the 12G. 4K output. 50, but okay, yeah. 4, I guess 4K 60 also, right? Uh, for the US and Japanese market and stuff, maybe. Uh, I've, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but for Europe, yeah. we got 50p, yeah. yeah. All right, so you have a bunch more stuff? Yeah, so we got one last thing I definitely want to show you guys. Yeah. It should be running in the background. And that's our wireless, wireless presentation system. So. Yeah, do you want to go in there? So Panasonic, obviously we show a lot, of, we have a lot of screens uh, and a lot of uh, projectors and a lot of them work in uh, education environments or corporate environments where you, someone will do a presentation. Uh, so behind me is our wireless, our wireless presentation system um, and that will basically uh, allow us to plug it into a laptop like we've done here and then the presentation will just come up on the screen so they don't have to do any um, HDMI cable runs or anything like that in the... It's just the USB? Uh, yes, so it's just USB that you plug in. Potentially it's using display link or some kind of a technology to take the, the feed of the USB and then wirelessly send it, it transmits over? Transmits it, yeah. But you can also, the interesting part is... Is if it 4K you, if you, or no? Uh, I am not sure about that. There's, There's a no, bunch of 4K logos there. Yes, so yeah. Yeah, we have 4K professional. Uh, yeah. I think that's for the screen. So the screen is 4K. Okay. Um, but for our new uh, SQ range, we can take the actual board out and we can add the wireless transmitter into the board. So you don't have to have the wireless base station hanging out on the, on the uh, table. But you can... Um, add that into the board and then every single screen if you were to uh, up, update your university or college or corporate area with uh, new screens you can have nice. that in, uh, implemented in there and then just the, U the wireless dongle to plug into the laptop. How much is the price for this kind of thing? Uh, is I don't have a price just yet. but I'm, uh, This is a revolutionary, is making all these presentations easier than uh, what's been before? Because yeah, before it seems to be like uh, like some kind of a guy mixing somewhere has a copy of the presentation, manually selects and puts it over. Uh, yes, yeah, so there you can potentially just broadcast it over exactly. as a video that's, feed. That's exactly it. So. Right. And then that's pretty much okay. it. We've got a couple more collaborative, collaborative areas such as Wolf Vision. So yeah. this is all for education. Um, yeah. And uh, these are the top, de top tech desks. Um, Great. Bunch of 4K logos again, but that's maybe the displays. And so this uh, is the full, uh, fully integrated uh, solution here. This is the Sign Up Pure. 
um, sign up pure All right and uh, over here more is this a touch this is a touch screen it's multi-touch so you can have two students come up to the yeah. screen at once, sorry. So you have two students come up to the screen. Let's say you had one student here, one student here. Both math, maths equations or something like that, and they can both answer at the same time, and they can have two touching uh, the board. So if you have multi-touch that, there we go. So Right, and this is called the TH75Q1 multi-touch displays. This is 75 inch. It's big. Yeah, so that's from our EQ1 range. All right. So um, I ISC is uh, definitely an important place for Panasonic. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's a, it's a big booth. Yeah, we always like to show all our uh, as many products as we can, not all of them. Um, What's happening here? So this is the. Uh, Art of Engaging Museum uh, for visitors. So you can have this in a uh, museum, something going on, something interactive for children to come and play with. Then you can stand here, we've got our camera up there, and it will just capture you in that sort of environment. So. Nice. And then you going up there triggers it to do something, basically. Cool. I'm here, and uh, I have to be careful where I'm standing. <laughs> All right, and this is this system here: three chip, ultra short throw, a large venue projector, twenty thousand lumen. And this and is our HD forty two. Our HD forty two camera, which is our full HD camera with uh, the three G SDI and the HDMI out the back. This is the new trend to do uh, museums more interactive. Absolutely. Enter some uh, some sharks. Absolutely. Get the kids excited. And it's kind of like the new thing where you so want to have for school trips and stuff like that. You can have obviously you bring a lot of kids along, and sometimes museums can be a little bit boring, or they were when I was growing up. So for this to come into the museum, definitely you'll sort of bring them, uh, bring, bring the museum alive. A lot. Of you the have children. to compete with the iPad and stuff that the kids are like playing at home. Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. Uh, so you've got to you take the kids them out of the house, out. get them in the museum, and then keep it as an interactive as possible. So here we have some expanded uh, 4K LCDs yes. that are upright. Why are they yeah. like this? Uh, because you could uh, use this as a, in portrait mode in, uh, as advertising in any shop or shopping mall. Um, and here we have our SQ1 series. The, when I was talking about removing the board from one of the screens, these are the screens that you'll be able to do that with, or you'll be able to add the wireless dongle for the presentation system into these ones here. And then we have our EQ series. Um, and obviously, depending on your price point, you choose between these sorts of screens. Uh, and then we have our CQ series here. Uh, and obviously, we have our different ranges here. So 86, 75, 65, and 55 in the, EQ series, in the SQ series. Sorry. Um, and then, What's happening with all these? Uh, the, those are showing some of the ports. So these are different stuff. out uh, the boards that you can have put in. So this is the Wolf Vision Sign Up Pure. Uh, this is the SDML slot, and, and then this is the 3G SDI. This one is a uh, Altera FPGA. Yes. So maybe accelerating a bunch of stuff. Yes. And there. Uh, and uh, with the 3G SDI, what's quite interesting is we. Um, as a broadcast, we have a broadcast division as well, so they'd be using these screens with the 3G SDI uh, input as well. Probably a smaller screen, maybe like a um, 55 inch on the SQ series because that's the only one that works with this. Um, but that would be perfect for that sort of scenario, using it as a monitor or even as a, just a final display. But let's, let's just go back to that area over here. Something is happening there too. Um, so if we, if we check this one, this is the world's thinnest bezel. Yeah. So as you can see, what is this? D bezel. LED. So yeah, D LED LCD display. Uh, what does the D stand for, Jason? D LED. Direct. Direct LED. Direct display. LED. Um, you can see here how thin the actual bezel is. Are those 4K? Uh, Yes. No, they're not. No, sorry, they're, no, they're not 4K. Four, they're not 4K. IPS. Uh, very, very, very small bezel. You got digital link in there. You can have it as portrait mode. So you put four of them together, it's 4K. But then you have direct LEDs in the back. 
All right. And yeah. if you go back over here, um, to maybe, uh, yeah. So, so that was a, that was a great tour. So, thanks a lot Thank for. You. Showing all the Thank stuff. You for coming by and enjoy the rest of IC. So, um, how's the business with Panasonic? There's like a big office is somewhere in the UK. Oh uh, yeah, we have a big office in the UK. We also have an office in Wiesbaden in Germany. Um, Wasn't their office moved to like uh, Holland or something because of Brexit? Uh, not, not yet. I can't be sure about what's happened with that yeah. personally, but because I haven't been staying up to, up to date with it all, there's been a lot of stuff in the news. So yeah. I'm just like, I'm are you based sure. in the UK? But I'm based in the UK, yeah. yeah. And so out of there is all the customers for Europe or the world? Uh, Buy through here. I mean, Middle uh, East. What do you mean, sorry? Like, like the customers in the Middle East, they would communicate with you directly. Or they, they, oh, yeah, so they, they can, the Middle East can come to the European. Um, sorry, the Middle East can come to Europe. And we also have our own um, divisions in the Middle East as well. And North America, there's a different department over there? And, no and North America have their own uh, separate entity and over there. Asia is in Japan, I guess. In Asia, yeah, exactly. All right. But then you have all the showroom, the demos, the show showrooms maybe in the UK. Yeah, we have, we have some showrooms. We have a solution center in the UK where we um, display a lot of our um, projectors and we have some cameras showing ledge capture and also tracking systems. Any solution that we can thought of, we generally put into that, um, into that room for display purposes. Is it near London? Uh, it's in Bracknell, so it depends where you're coming from in London, but it could be about an hour away from London.